afternoon. Uh, I'm Dr. Edward Gold. I'm the chairman of the Department of Medicine at Pascag Valley Medical Center. To my right is Dr. George Lin. Let George introduce himself. Yeah, my name is Dr. George Lin. I'm the uh, chief medical officer for Pascag Valley Medical Center. I'm also a practicing uh, pulmonologist in Westwood uh, area. And we are here today to discuss COVID-19 vaccination and here to discuss frequently asked questions regarding vaccination. I'd like to start by stating that Pasco Valley Medical Center do have vaccination available for our frontline healthcare workers, including emergency department, critical care unit, endoscopy, and um, operating room. We are, I started vaccination last week and it's been a success. We have so far Pfizer, um, COVID-19 vaccination available to us. Hopefully at the end of this week, we will have a new Moderna vaccination. Okay. Um, a number of people have asked how many injections do you need for each vaccine? Uh, there's two injections, an initial injection, and then depending on which vaccine you get, a second injection, either three weeks or four weeks after the initial injection. Full immunity will not occur until approximately a week after the second injection. Vaccines are safe. As of today, 556,000 people in the United States have received the vaccine and there have been no major adverse events. Yes, a handful of people have had some allergic at events, but nothing of any great concern. Some of the side effects associated with COVID-19 vaccine, the most common side effect is the pain at the side of injection, also fatigue, headache, and muscle pain. Um, some people experience chills and fever, those are the sign of your immune system working to where the vaccination is not the sign of COVID-19 infection. It usually goes away after a few days. Personally, I had the vaccination. I had a mild headache, muscle pain, and fatigue, um, and it went away after 12 hours. The next question, should I vaccinate if I have history of severe allergic reaction? The answer to that is yes. The recommendation is you should discuss that with your primary care physician regarding the risk benefit. It is recommended that you receive injection provided that the medication is available at the site of the vaccination place. Another question is, should I get the vaccine if I'm pregnant? The answer to that is yes. Pregnant patients are considered to be at high risk for developing severe disease, and therefore the recommendation is to receive the vaccine. In the studies that were just performed, a number of pregnant patients were administered the vaccine without any severe consequences. Um, another question is people say, if I've been previously infected with COVID-19, do I need the vaccine? At the present time, the CDC is recommending vaccination for people who have had previous COVID-19. The one proviso to that is that they are recommending that you wait approximately three months before receiving the vaccination. Um, if I current, also, if you currently have COVID-19, again, you would not get the vaccine until three months after your initial diagnosis. Right, George. So next one, do I still need to wear masks, social distance, and wash my hand? Answer to that is yes. Um, the trial study showed that it prevent person from getting disease or symptom after infection. However, the study cannot complete without uh, infection, meaning that you can still be asymptomatic and pass on the virus to other people. So the recommendation is to continue wearing the mask 
and keep social distance and wash your hand at all times. And another question that people had is, what is a messenger RNA vaccine? A messenger RNA vaccine is a vaccine created from the messenger, messenger RNA of the spike protein. In other words, when we create a protein, the um, guidelines, the structure is described in our DNA. In order to turn it into a protein, that DNA is then what we call transcribed into something called messenger RNA. And that messenger RNA is then translated into a protein. In this instance, the scientists have created the messenger RNA for the spike protein, and you are injected with that. That spike protein enters your cells. It does not enter your DNA. It does not in enter your nucleus. It does not change your DNA in any way, shape, fashion, or form. The messenger RNA is then translated into a protein, which is on the surface of your cells. This protein and the messenger RNA last for several days, allowing your immune system to recognize it and develop an immune response. It is not a permanent change to your body. And I can't reiterate that enough. There is a lot of false information about this. Okay. I'll open up to a question. Yeah. Um, what are the common side effects of the vaccine? So well, as George said, the common side effects are uh, muscle ache at the uh, muscle pain at the site of injection, maybe some inflammation at the site of injection. But people can report mild headaches, chills, fever for a day. Um, some sweats possibly, and a generalized achy feeling. But this usually is gone within 24 to 36 hours. And these symptoms are the signs of your immune system reacting to the protein produced by the, uh, uh, by the messenger RNA vaccine. And that's a good thing. Is it true that individuals with food allergies should wait to get the vaccine? I don't think that's true. I, I think that recommendation is to get vaccination, but you just gotta make sure that place where you get your vaccination has all the right equipment in case you have a reaction. Um, once you get the vaccine, will the lab do titers for antibodies? We don't know how long the titers of antibodies will, develop, will last. We do know and that a normal immune response, you will see antibody development uh, after about a week to 10 days, peaking probably at three to four weeks after the exposure. In this particular vaccine, you need to have two injections. So your immunity should be full by two weeks after the second vaccination. How long this will last, nobody knows. And that's a subject of intense research at this time. Can asthmatics take the vaccine? Yes, asthmatics should take the vaccine, as I mentioned. The risk of COVID-19 and severe consequences of COVID-19 is high in asthmatic patients, so I do recommend that asthmatic patients take COVID-19 vaccination. Is there a difference in the effectiveness between the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccine? Effectively, no. One study reported 94.5% protection, the other one 95% protection. There's no difference uh, between these two as far as we can tell. At what age do you recommend to be vaccinated for COVID-19? For Pfizer, I believe recommendation is 18 and above. I'm sorry? 18? Oh uh, yeah. Um, I think no. 18 years of, I think Pfizer is 16. Pfizer, Pfizer is 16 years of above, above and, and Moderna is 18, 18 years and above. This is 
unknown at this point. Right now, the health care workers and, uh, the, and residents of skilled nursing facilities and like that will be injected first. They have not, the state of New Jersey has not yet published the plans about how the general population will receive the vaccine. There will be a tiering of people who can get the vaccine first. So those patients with underlying illnesses, immunosuppression, who are at risk for developing severe disease will get the vaccine first and then the rest of the, uh, the general population. Is there a way to best prepare for the vaccine, such as building up the immune system with vitamins and minerals? I think so. No, there's really no evidence that doing anything before the vaccine uh, will make you uh, withstand the side effects better. It is generally recommended that you do not take Tylenol or Advil or Aleve before you get the vaccine because you do not want to blunt the fever response if you get one to the vaccine. What do you need to know? We're good. We're good. Any other questions? So I hope that everybody um, have the question answered, and I encourage everybody to get vaccination. As you know, vaccination is the only way in the history that eradicate any type of virus to re achieve the fertile immunity. Uh, it has never been achieved through the natural wild virus. So I encourage everybody, if you can, to receive vaccination. It is a personal choice, and I hope that people can receive educated information and make that right choice for yourself uh, and the family. And again, we're here and hope that vaccination will end this pandemic. We have one more question. I suffer with psoriasis, is this safe? Yes. You, in fact, you are at higher risk because you have an underlying condition and should definitely take the vaccine. Again, I can echo George's words. Don't be afraid, take the vaccine. Let's get this thing under control and out of our lives.